right, moving right along with our functions, or our look at functions, I've created two custom functions here for us to look at. And the point of this video is to teach you how to pass data from one function to the next, and that is referred to as um, function returns and passing data from one function to the next. So, so what's a function return? Well, let's look at this top function, and we have the return keyword. This is a keyword in JavaScript that tells JavaScript to do something. Essentially, what we're saying in this function is that we want to return this value here. Now, it could be text. Now, right now, it could be just return hi. Simple as that. So it would return the value of, well, it would return the text hi. Now, who would it return this text to? It would, this function, make uppercase, would return that value in this case, it's a message dot to uppercase. I'll show you what this is in a second. It will return that value to whomever or whatever function is calling it. So in this case, what we're doing, we're saying take the value of whatever is in message. In this case, it's going to be some text, right, message. And we're going to say make it uppercase. Now, to uppercase is a built-in JavaScript function. And it works on all text automatically. And this is how you use it. You go, you have your string. Like we could have went like this. Could have went the text dot to upper text. But we're going to use the argument from our function. And we're going to say make it upper text and then return that. So for this video, we're going to be returning this value to whoever calls make uppercase. And in this case, you look in our second custom function. That's what we do. We actually call the function make uppercase, right? And we're taking the variable in this top function, display text variable, and we're using it in make uppercase. And whatever results from that, which is going to be, of course, the text, the original text from up here in uppercase format, we're sticking that in a variable, and then we're just using the alert box to display it to us. So this is a lot to take in, and I'll explain to you why we're doing things in a second. But let's just go down here for a second, and you see we're calling the function display text on the on click, and we're sending it this text message. Death sucks this morning. Sometimes I suck in the afternoon too, but this morning is it's been a sucky morning anyway. So let's uh, we'll just take a look at this in action, and we'll look at some details. So I'm going to refresh this. So we have talk, right? If we look down here, talk. So let's just click on this, and an alert box should pop up. Steph sucks this morning. Now you see how it's all in caps. So let's go back here, and it wasn't all in caps here. It was actually mixed case, right? So let's uh, talk about a few things and clarify this for you. First of all, you're asking me, why would you have two functions to do this. Well, number one is to create an example for you to see how we're passing return statements. This is a return statement, right? Any line, line of text in JavaScript is a statement. So because this is a keyword return, it has a particular functionality. It's built into the JavaScript language. It basically spits back to us whatever results from this. This could be a variable. It could be another function. It could be whatever you want. So what we're doing is we're saying take the text that we pass into make uppercase, right? And we uh, we call this function actually over here. Take this text, turn it up to, to uppercase, and then give it back to whoever, to whomever is calling this function. In our case, the display text function is actually calling the make uppercase function. Remember, calling means to use or to... Uh, invoke to bring about, you know, or that's what calling is. So we call the make uppercase function and we pass it the variable, we give it uh, the variable test to display. Or, yeah, it's a it should have been text to display, but anyway. And this, of course, this argument value comes from our on click down here, right? Steph sucks this morning. So we're doing this, it's kind of a backwards roundabout way of doing something. We could have just inserted this in here and done it easily, but then I wouldn't have been able to show you how to pass return statements from one function to the next. This is used a lot in all the time in all programming, 
And the reason that you would do this is that one of the key things that you want to do, one of the key concepts, ideas, strategies in programming is to keep your functionality separate and clean. So for instance, this function has one very simple job is to make text uppercase. And this function has one simple job is to take text and alert it out to us. So you see the separation of concerns, as they would say, or separation of jobs or separation of tasks. That's what functions are very useful for, so that you can segment your code into reusable chunks that you can use all over the place. So for instance, this particular function, make uppercase, now you can use it all over the place and it's not tied to anything particular. Same, with, same thing with display text, right? So in this video, we're learning not only theories of JavaScript, we're actually learning some strategies as well. So we, the theory is, you know, we learn about passing values from one function to the next. We're learning about the return statement. And we're learning about how it's a good idea to separate your code into reusable chunks, into functions that are logical, that make sense. Another thing you should take away from this, you notice how my function names are sort of self-describing, right? It's called make upper case. So it kind of tells you what this function does. So you, as a programmer, you won't have to try to figure out what this function does. You can see pretty much what it does right off the bat. Now I could have called it, you know, ABC, ADV or whatever I want to call, but that doesn't tell me anything about what this function does. Now I have to go and read, okay, what's this code do now? So for simple functions like this, it's not terribly important, but when you get into more advanced stuff, it's always cool to have functions that have self-describing names. Any code, whether it be function names, whether it be variable names, you want to try and make those names self-describing because readability of the code, and this has everything to do with readability of the code, is, a, is a, what separates the junior programmers from people who are actually doing good work. Try to keep your code readable. Try to keep it manageable by having self-describing names, by separating your function, your major functionality into functions, and then you can call functions from other functions to get the job done. I hope this video makes sense. It's, uh, it's a little bit more advanced, I guess. I think when we get into more advanced examples, it will sort of gel in over time. To help this stuff sink in, passing functions and returning and so forth, I wanted to show you another way, well, not another way, but another example of this where we're going to be using an array as opposed to simple text. So down here we have our, uh, we're calling, we have our uh, on click, and we're calling the count, the array underscore counter function. And what it does is actually calls the create array function. So we have a function in our event handler. The event handler is the on click. We have a function calling another function. So let's look at this create array function first. So we go up, create array. So as the function would suggest, the function name, create array creates an array for us, right? We've seen this code before. Now what's interesting, this function returns the product variable, and we know the product variable is actually our array. So it returns the product's array. So now we know what create array does. Now the function array counter, right? This is the actual function that we're calling with this event handler. It itself, it takes one argument, and the argument is, we called it my underscore array, and the argument base, basically, we assume that this, um, this argument here is an array, because we do our looping code, where we loop through the array, and then we write out on the page using document.write the values of the array. As you see, we're passing one function to another, and we are using the return, the return statement from the first function, create array, to send this products array to the second function, which will do the job of counting it all up. So let's take a look how this looks in our page. So here it is. Let's uh, on-click that. Oops, down here. Here's our array. 